In this video I'm going to have a play with this little 8 strip of NeoPixel displays. I'm going to show you how to get it running with a pick and I'll show exactly how to write the software to drive these LEDs. This is the LED strip that I got from eBay. Now you can see the connections are there. Power and ground can go straight through and the data in and data out um, can be connected as well. But it's got two mounting holes in it which is quite useful. They're connected like this with the data in on the left and then the data out for the first LED goes to the next data in on the next LED and so on down the chain. This is the eBay listing for the small strip, um, just $2.99, uh, free shipping, coming from a UK supplier as well, that's pretty good I think. Now I better solder some wires onto this so I can put it into my breadboard. And that's it, ready to go. This is my breadboard with the micro already fitted and the wires and connector for the programming. So I just a matter of putting the um, LED board on there, power and ground, and I'm using pin 7 here as my data pin. And there we go. This schematic shows how I have it wired up on the breadboard. One output for the LEDs and the other connections are for the programming connector. So for the software, I'm going to start off from where I left off with the other video, um, video number 6, which is the other WS2812 video, where I developed this software and explained how it works and how the WS2812B protocol works. So if you do want to know more details about that, it's worth going back and having a look at my um, other video number 6. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner for it if you want to. Otherwise, I'll show you the whole code here now and you, you can just copy that if you want. Okay, so I'll go over the software briefly here um, just to explain what all the, these functions do. Um, so let's take the first one. This, this function is to write to a single L LED. So this will write the RGB values, which are 8-bit values, to the first LED. Um, and, and this will write to the second and this will write to the third so this is going to write, the first one here is going to write um, RGB so it's going to write 64 to the red LED um, so it's going to light up red, not full brightness um, but that, that's, that's what it does and, and the second one will be the green and the, and the last one will be the blue um, so to look at how does this function itself work, well we can just go up to, to here, this is the function and we can see that um, it calls another function which is to write um, a single byte this time and um, we're going to call, call it green um, in this instance because the, the LED actually requires green, red, blue um, in that order rather, rather than red, green, blue. Um, but these are just the values that we've given it here. So this function here is just to write the three values um, to to the LED in the order of green, red, blue. If you're enjoying this video, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps the channel. So how does this WS send byte work? Well, the LED requires a pulse for each bit and it requires a one pulse is a long pulse and a zero pulse is a short pulse. So in this function by um, bitwise anding each uh, bit in our color that we've sent it, our value that we've sent it, um, taking first of all taking the top bit um, and anding that with our value um, if, uh, if that results in a 1, then we send a 1 pulse. If that results in a 0, so if, if our value has a 0 in that position, <coughs> we send a 0 pulse. And then we, it, this continues down to the next bit down in the byte that we've sent it. And same again, if it's a, a high, it's a 1 pulse, and if it's a low, it's a 0 pulse. And then we just carry on down, and we do all 8 bits in that fashion, and send a pulse out as either a 1 pulse or a 0 pulse for each one so in total we send 8 pulses which will encode uh, our 8 bit value and so the pulses are generated by these two functions here that's our 1 pulse 
that's our zero pulse and we can see um, the zero pulse it, it just send, it sends a one and then immediately a zero um, so that's a short pulse and then for a, a one pulse uh, it is a longer pulse so we send send a one for three uh, instruction cycles and then we send it back to zero so one sends a long pulse zero sends a short pulse again for more explanation on this um, I do recommend you look at my other video number six and that will explain all about the protocol of how of how these um, and how and how these pulse widths are determined and and, and created and and checked um, but you don't need to really worry about that I mean this this does work the only caveat um, for this is that the, your micro must be running at a 16 megahertz clock rate and if it does then these functions should work just fine and all you need to do is, is copy them let's program this now and check that it works yeah that looks good that's worked perfectly well thinking about this write function I've realized it would probably be better to have a 24-bit write instead of this 8-bit write so <coughs> instead of writing these three values red red green blue um, it will be better I think to write a single predefined color value which will encom encompass the 24 bits um, of, of RGB that the, that the LED needs so to do that I've created another function which I've called WS2812 write 24 for 24 bits and all I have to do for this now is put in a color in here by name like like cyan for example and then as long as I define what I mean by cyan by doing a hash define <coughs> cyan as a hex value and then in, the, in this hex value we'll write that the three RGB um, values that we want for cyan so cyan is a mixture of uh, blue and green so there's, n there's no red so zero for red and then I'll put 12 and 12 for the green and blue so now it knows what that cyan means um, I can go ahead and show you the, what this function contains now and it's very similar to the other 8-bit write function except this time it's going to do blocks of three blocks of eight it's going to do the green first which is the um, it's going to look at each bit in the eight, in the 8-bit value for green and look at them one at a time and decide whether to send a one pulse or a zero pulse um, and then it's going to continue on and do exactly the same thing for the red <coughs> and then it's going to do exactly the same thing for the blue now let's try this out and uh, see how it, it works um, so first thing I want to do is uh, let's have a few more colors than than the cyan now let me um, paste a few more colors in that I already did defined so I've got red uh, green and blue defined and also a mag magenta yellow orange and a white what I can do now is I'm going to comment those out we're not going to use those and I'll write out several values, eight, um, a total of eight, eight of these to write. So we'll write to eight LEDs. Let's just copy and paste some of these, and then I'll change the colours. So let's just uh, do a few different colours here that we've defined: red, green, blue. Magenta, yellow, orange, and white. Now, if I program that, we should see those colors appear on the LEDs. Ah, okay, something went wrong there. Did you see what happened? The first LED did something strange. 
let me investigate that and I'll come right back I think I know what it was um, I added this delay here at the beginning because what I think has happened is that the um, the first uh, colour was written out um, too quickly and perhaps the power supply for the LED wasn't stable um, in time and it, so the first colour that was written somehow w went wrong and by adding this little delay in here um, it seems to have worked so I'm going to show you that now okay let's program that and see how it works yes that's better I hope you can see the colours there they don't show up too well on the camera okay I've toned those colours down a bit and adjusted the camera and if I put a little piece of paper over here as a diffuser hopefully you can see those colors a little bit better here's a demo pattern I've just programmed just this is just gonna flash through all the colors um, so I've been just writing eight times cyan followed by a small delay and eight times magenta then orange, then green, then white, then red, then blue, then yellow, and then back to the beginning of that. Um, and the delay you can see there, I've got set to at 150 milliseconds. Uh, here's another little demo display of a sort of scrolling light effect. So you can see what I've done here. I've used cyan and a light cyan, um, uh, which is just this one, a lower, a lower value for the cyan color and then I just simply sort of animated it by moving it uh, starting from the first LED and then to the second LED and then to the third LED and so on and following it with two LEDs a lighter color um, so that as you can see I've done that in a, a number of steps here so that it sort of animates it and goes around in, in that loop and just repeats itself again with a a small delay you can use your imagination to do all, all kinds of things with these lights I'll show the whole code now uh, as I promised this is the entire code that's uh, in um, the main .c file which is all the code that I've written for this demo uh, the only other code is the code generated by the configurator which I haven't touched um, so I, I won't show that as it's you don't really need to see it the configurator will generate it automatically but this is everything I've written to do those uh, demos of the LEDs and if you copy all of that it should work just as well for you just remember to set your pick clock speed to 16 megahertz that's it for this one I hope you enjoyed that video please remember to like and subscribe and feel free to comment uh, below if you wish and thanks for watching all the way to the end